Do you think about the muscles that you use in your golf swing? Do you consciously feel certain muscle groups engage and move and activate your golf swing or create that pace and power or do you just swing the club? Now the concept here today that I'm talking about is levers in the golf swing. So a lever is something that generates movement and if you've got one lever working and you've got two levers working you're going to create different amount of speed with a marginal change in effort. So I'm going to talk you through what levers are in the swing and it might give you some ideas as to how you can generate more speed in your golf swing. And then I'm going to talk about one big area in the body that people don't seem to engage or activate in the swing to maybe help you get a bit more speed and a bit more consistency. So running through the levers, the first thing is like the wrists. If I use the wrists and only the wrists, I can only create a certain amount of speed. I'm only going to get a certain amount of energy through the ball. So I get a shot there just from the wrists. And then if I go wrists and arms, I get a bit more. So wrists and arms, I get more speed. I get more energy in the shot, I get more distance, but there's more layers. If I get wrists, arms and shoulders going, and I get a bit more from that upper body, that upper torso, wrists, arms and shoulders, I get more speed. Again, I get another layer of developed power. If I go wrists, arms, shoulders and hips, I get a bit more again. I get more generated speed. I get more elements contributing to the overall speed that I can generate. I just get a little bit more from there, which then accelerates that top half even more. Now, sometimes people will think that weight shift is also a way to add power and add speed. I'm not a big fan of weight shift because if I want to strike a certain spot on the floor, if I rotate and rotate back, I get back to that same spot. If I slide back and slide through, it's very hard to hit the same spot. So I find it generally as a behavior in the swing to be less consistent when we're sliding, but it can add power. But if I now really engage my legs and get into the floor, I've then got the basis of the floor moving my hips and then I've got my shoulders working, I've got my arms working and I've got my wrists working. I've got more layers of speed to generate. So I'm really gonna get into the floor here and I get more things available to create that speed. You in your golf swing could be missing one of those elements, but there's one big element that is really gonna help engage multiple elements from one thought. And the thought I want you to kind of like get your head round, you can do this with a golf club or a stick, whatever it is, but I'm gonna get this stick on my chest and I really, really need to get my chest moving as fast as I can. I want to see how much I can get out of this. I want to see how much rotation I can create, but I really, really want to use the abs. I really want to use that core. I really want to engage those abs to create that twist and that rotation. So I really want to turn back, get these engaged and use them to rotate. Slight disclaimer, if you have any back issues or anything like that, or you jar your back or you've got problems with your spine, it could be an issue to do this because you put more pressure on that rotational element of your spine. But something that's worse for the spine is this. If we do this, this puts pressure into one area of the back. If we rotate, it spreads that pressure out. So in another way, I want that movement, but without the extra excessive force for those people with bad backs. Further to this, I'm going to be coming over here into the gym area of the studio with Kyle and we're going to be going through the TPI training module to see where my limitations, strengths and weaknesses are to see if I can get some more out of my body into my golf swing physically. So stay tuned if you want to see that little snippet.